Welcome to another Blender bite Size video where I'm going to show you how to create this procedural worn rubber material in Blender 4. Just before we start, I'll remind you I'm using Blender 4.2 long-term support, Windows 11, NVIDIA graphics card, Cycles render engine, and I have a custom startup file. Just before I continue with the tutorial, let me remind you that you can grab this material and hundreds more on my Gumroad store, blenderbitesize.gumroad.com. So here we are with everything in place. So I've got a room with a light, some lighting in the walls, the object and the camera. That's my custom startup file, which I show you how to do in a separate video. I'm going into the shading tab and enab enabling display render preview using the cycles render engine, selecting the object and clicking on new to assign a new material. So we have the principled BSDF here, which I'm gonna make some adjustments on. So I'm gonna change the color to 0 0.015 on the value and zero on hue and saturation. I'm gonna change the tint in the specular to 0.35. And then I'm gonna move that out of the way and give myself a bit more room because we've got quite a few nodes to come. I'll leave a bit of a sliver of a preview at the top though so you can see what's happening as I'm adding things. I'm going to rename the material so that if I need to append it to another project I can find it easily. Now pressing shift A brings up the search box to search for nodes and we're going to add a noise texture. Again, this time I'm adding a color ramp. And then once more, and I'm gonna add a bump node. Now I'm going to select those three and press Shift D to duplicate them. And then I'm gonna select all of those and just move them out of the way a bit so I've got some more room to work. Then select the color ramp and the bump node at the bottom and duplicate those. Then I'm gonna search for and add a wave texture. Okay, let's start connecting things up. But first I'm gonna add a texture coordinate and a mapping node to the first noise texture and I'm going to use the object output from the texture coordinate. I'm going to collect, connect the color ramp to the roughness of the principal shader and adjust the position of the black indicator to 0.25. Connect that to the noise texture via the factor output and you can already see there we've got some nice uh, roughness going on. I'm going to adjust the scale to 0.3, detail to 15, roughness to 0.625 and leave the other two as they are. I'm going to take the output from the color ramp and plug it into the height of the bump node and then plug that into the normal of the principal shader and adjust the settings on the bump node to 0.1 for strength and 0.1 for distance. I'm going to add a frame around these by selecting them and pressing shift P and then pressing N to open up the box on the side and giving it a label of roughness. So I know when I come back to this what I need to do or what nodes I need to adjust to affect the roughness. <coughs> Next up we're going to connect the mapping node to the second noise texture and the bump node into the normal of the first uh, bump node. Then connect the color ramp to the bump node and the noise texture to the color ramp. On the color ramp, I'm adjusting the position of the black to 0.55 and changing the interpolation mode to ease. On the noise texture, I'm changing the scale to 10, detail to 14.5, roughness to 0.5, and the distortion to 0.5. 
I'm checking the invert box on the bump node so that the detail goes inwards as opposed to outwards and adjusting the strength to 0.5 and the distance to 0.1. Again, I'm going to add a frame around those and this will give us our chip detail. So again, we know that if we want to affect the chip detail, these are the nodes that we need to play with. Now this last collection of nodes, the last three at the bottom, are actually just going to give us some extra detail if we are going to take close-up uh, stills or frames of the object. So you can actually skip this bit if you need to, but I'll show you the result. So again, we're going to connect the bump node to the normal input of the second bump node, color ramp into the bump and wave texture into the color ramp. And then, of course, connect the vector to the mapping node. On the wave texture, we're going for rings and we're going for triangle. The scale we're going to put at 200, distortion to 23, detail to 14.5, detail scale 2.5 and detail roughness to 0.75. We're going to move the white marker on the color ramp to 0 0.805 and the black marker to 0.75. And if I zoom in and just isolate that color ramp, you can see the kind of detailed texture that we're getting there. On the bump node, I'm going to invert it and I'll isolate the bump node there. And I'm going to give it a strength of 0.25 and distance of 0.1. So you can just about make out some texture there because rubber is not smooth, although it may look it. So we're going to call that one fine detail. And that is our material actually finished. So I'm going to go back and bring back the principled output. And I'll zoom in so you can see what effect this has. So we can see there the chip detail gives us those large gouges, whereas the fine detail gives us the extra bit of um, texture within that material. If I give it a slightly different color, the color of the object will be controlled by the principled shader. And you can make it whatever color you want. If you're doing a ball, maybe it's a chewed up dog toy, you can make it whatever color you fancy. OK, so just a couple of pointers here. I've got the noise threshold in the render settings at 0.5. I've got the denoise enabled. And in the compositing tab, I actually have the denoise um, node in there. So you press Shift A and search for it as normal. And I've also got a tiny little bit of lens distortion. I just like adding that effect to my finished renders. You don't need the viewer and the composite nodes, by the way, as long as you've got the composite node, that's fine. So let's take a look and see that rendered out. And with those settings, that took around eight seconds per frame. So that's actually quite quick. But you can see it gives you a nice, realistic looking battered rubber or worn rubber. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this one and will find it useful. Please remember to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe for future content and any questions please feel free to put in the comments below the video.